Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. Uh, today I would like to share my journey as an academic staff. Right, you know, right to you know, right now I'm a vice chancellor, and also my passion about education. Uh, back in 1980s, I studied in UTM and I was invited to join UTM as a young academic staff. And uh, after some consultation with my parents, they insist that I accept that offer. So I decided to join UTM. And uh, in fact, I sat for two. I sat for interview twice because the the first one I rejected, and they called me for another interview. And uh, you know, with some, uh, of course, they complained about me. But later, I accept just because I listened to my parents. I think the first lesson I learned is you must listen to your parents. They will give you the right advice. Then, uh, of course, as an academic staff, you have to follow the flow. So I studied in many universities, you know, as mentioned by our two you know, MCs. So I obtained my PhD in bank in 1998. I came back uh, to UTM. Of course, as, uh, as an academic staff, so your core task, basically, you have to teach, you have to do research, you have to serve the community. And uh, among those, the unfortunate one, they have to do this, uh, what we call administrative jobs. And uh, probably I was among the, those uh, unfortunate. So they appointed me as a head of a department, which at that time I managed about 60, uh, 60 of my colleagues. And later I was appointed as a deputy dean. Uh, in, the, the, in the faculty and in 2000 sorry in two, two, 2011 yeah, in 2011 sorry before that in 2008 I was appointed as the director of uh, office of asset and development of UTM and uh, of course uh, this is the beauty of an academia so we have the chance to, of course, to practice your knowledge, to teach your knowledge. But at the same time, you are given the chance to also practice the real world. Practice your real knowledge into the real project. So in my case, when I was appointed as the, the Director of Office and Asset Development, at that time, UTM has a big project to manage. We have a project, cost about 1 billion, 26 packages. And uh, I'm very grateful, very thankful to my team. We managed to complete it. And you can see this rebuilding is one of the projects that I managed at that time. And uh, I learned a lot from that uh, journey. One thing I learned, of course, I apply all my knowledge about project management. About I'm a civil engineer. So one thing that I learned from the, the, that experience is that I learned to manage people. And if you listen to Jack Ma, not easy to manage smart people. Uh, in university, we have, in UTM, you know, we have 1,800 academic staff, all are smart people. So, in 2011, I was appointed as Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development, basically just uh, an extension of my job before that, as a Director of Office of Asset and Development. But this time, I have to manage uh, like ICT services and uh, look after some uh, aspect of financial sensibility of UTM. And in, tw in 2013, that was the moment uh, which never in my dream, never in my imagination that one day I will leave this university. I was in London to make the story you know, a little bit dramatic. I was in London and on the way back to Malaysia. And at that time, there, there was no VC in UTM because it's vacant. 
and someone called me Wahid, you are chosen to be the VC. Just imagine, I don't think any of my colleagues, even now, they, I think they believe that. One day, Wahid will lead UTM. But it already is something, you know, history now. And uh, as, as you are in London and no one to talk, you just keep it to yourself, you know, no one to share. So I bought a plane and came back. Nothing I can do, you know, because then in the letter of appointment, there's no option whether you accept it or reject it. So it is now, you know, it's a history basically. So now I'm the VC of UTM. I'm, uh, I, I'm a leader of one of the top universities in Malaysia. We are whether number three or number two. And I have 23,000 students, big numbers of students. I can make a big change. Uh, I can tell the princess that I'm not alone in UTM. And uh, I have 5,000 staff, 2,000 of which are academic. So uh, when you become a VC, basically, you know, you look after the overall aspect of our university. Uh, academic, you know, research, working with industries, working with our partners, locals, overseas, and you know, look after our students. Hey, we have 3,000 international students in UTM. And I can do a lot of work from the top. You know, It's like you, know, you look from the helicopter view of a UTM. Flashback, I remember when I was uh, just an ordinary lecturer, teaching education is something that you know, make me why I am, I am today. So even as a VC, I don't think I can just leave all those basic jobs as an academic and do the big thing of a university. So I started to think, what is the essence of education? And you know, we talked about food just now. I think education just next after food. You need food yeah, to keep your body healthy but you need education to keep your mind grow. And education, I think, is the one of the yeah, second after put. Eh? No need to discuss on that. And I am grateful that I choose this career. I'm an engineer. I'm now a, an academic. I combine these two, I think we can make a big change to the world. So, so to me, the essence of education is a trust and obligation to be carried out with wisdom, trustworthiness, and noble, noble virtue. And thousand years ago, Aristotle you know, has mentioned this, educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. Yeah, we tend to, as a lecturer, we tend to finish our syllabus, we tend to finish our curriculum. The job is only to teach and then to assess our students, give them grades. But I think that is not enough. Yeah. As a lecturer, as an academic staff, you have more to do with your students. And uh, education goes beyond mere acquisition of knowledge involving the mind. What is more important is shaping and nurturing the heart and soul through proper education to create lasting values and virtues. And positive impact. So I think this is what I want to preach to all my academic staff. This is the message that I want to tell all my students in UTM. So we can make a big impact by willing to put ourselves, to shape our mind, to nurture our heart and soul in UTM. So this is the opportunity we, we provide to the, our students. So that now is a matter of whether they are willing to do that or not. Uh, so in UTM, we have many initiatives, we have many programs, we have, besides students going to the classrooms. So we have in UTM, we call total learning experience or, or we, what we call holistic campus experience. So what we do under this program is we provide the opportunities for students. You know, you go to the classroom, yes. But outside the classroom, when they are in the hostels, when they are you know, doing all the activities and campus, they must take this opportunity to be part of the campus community, to nurture them, 
yeah, to be a good citizen, to understand. For example, nowadays we talk about sustainable living. So to ask, how can we help them to understand this? How can we help them to practice this? And I believe with 23,000 students now we have, we can, be, we can make a big, big change. I'm not alone. I believe I'm not alone. And under Sustainable Campus, we have, this is Car Free Campus, Car Free Day. And we have Energy Management Initiative. We have uh, Zero Waste Initiative. We hope we don't waste any food. Yeah, to support yeah, the work by our princess just now. So what I do here, I have to walk my talk. To introduce this car free day, it's only one day a month. But the resistance that we receive, especially from my close friends, you, know, you can imagine, no one to walk in the campus. If, I think if they allow them, they will bring their car to their, to their room. You know, that's the, 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 our, our, our habit. But in UTM, we managed to introduce this, and I'm glad that students are very supportive of this. Of course, they, have, they don't have cars, probably. But one thing that we learn, or what we, what we want to do here, is we want to let them learn. Uh, this is the way forward. This is the way that we can form what we call sustainable society. What we want to, to achieve is to make them you know, live better than us in the future. Eh, not for us, it's for our children, for our grandchildren. And, uh, yeah, one of my favorite, uh, you know, uh, session. So I like to sit with students, not many, because too many is not good. So in this case, I call it a tea time with the VC. And I spend maybe one hour or two hours sitting with about 10 students, 15 students. And uh, they come from all background, undergraduates, postgraduate, locals, international. What do you get from this session? Of course, I waste my time, you know. But to me, this is probably the most rewarding time I have in the university. You know, I can listen to them. I can talk to them, they can talk to me, they can tell me, I can capture their aspirations, I can capture their imagination, I can capture their energy, you know, and their dream. What they want, you know, how do, how do they look at their future? And how UTM can, you know, empower them? How can we, UTM, can enrich them with the new or and improve in the learning experience? So in UTM, we believe, you know, the, everyone in UTM, we play, we do our role as an educators. So I call it, UTM must, be, must have a good conducive ecosystem to nurture students, to enrich student learning experience. So this is one of the, probably is a signature of me as a VC. And uh, this is we call passion. This is what we call passion. So passion is only one word. But to translate it into real action, so I have these four formula just to motivate myself. You know, Steve Jobs about, talk about passion, everyone talk about passion. But I need a formula. You know, to me, my understanding of passion, you have, must have these four components. I call it four S. First S, of course, sense of mission. Yeah, you must be able to look far away, far ahead. Of course, guided by your values, virtues, and uh, purpose. Yeah, for, for us, yeah, this is my small contribution, combining engineer and, uh, and educator. I think I can do a lot. And of course, you know, you want to do something better than what you enjoy today. Second S is, there must be element of struggle. There's no easy way out. There's no easy way we can resolve any problem. It must come, you know, with all your passion and your energy eh, to overcome all the struggle. And, of course, with struggle, you need to sacrifice a lot. Yeah, you cannot work just within your, my job as a VC. I have to go out from my office. I have to go down. I have to talk to people. I have to take extra time. I have to take extra energy. I have to sacrifice my time for other things just to, to make sure that, you know, I can achieve that. Objective that we set. And of course, you cannot live without sincerity. 
uh, whatever good you want to do. And nowadays, sincerity is not enough. Some, some people say, honestly sincere. Because some people, they are sincere but not honest. You know, you, uh, just just some, some people say that. And uh, so what, whatever we are doing now, as of course as we see at the moment, I can see that what we are doing, what I'm trying to do, basically, you know, through to our vision, vision and our philosophy. I like to, to just quote our philosophy here. Yeah. UTM strives with total commitment to attain excellence in science, technology and engineering for the well-being and prosperity of mankind. Thank you very much.